Hi, Stephen from Mona Disown. In today's video, I am comparing the difference between five eight core CPUs so you can determine which may be the best for your use case. Now, I don't cover gaming in this video, but have done and will continue to do separate laptop comparisons where I showcase that. It's mainly an AMD event though. The only Intel CPU I throw in the mix is the i9-9880H in my Omen 15T. And the results you see are the best case as I have undervolted it. I test the Ryzen 9 4900HS, that is in my ASUS Zephyrus G14. The Ryzen 7 4800HS, that is in the ASUS Zephyrus G15. The Ryzen 7 4800H in the ASUS TUF A15 and the desktop Ryzen 7 1700X that was released three years ago. I have that clocked at 3.8 GHz and the fastest I could get the RAM was 2800 MHz. All the other AMD systems have RAM at 3200 MHz and the Intel system at 2666 MHz. Now I bought all of these systems myself so I would be grateful if you could show your support and subscribe to my channel. I will be having a bunch of videos out on the G14 and as soon as I get in some 10th gen Intel CPUs, I will add them into the mix. Most people know Cinebench R20 as it's quick and easy to compare CPUs as it renders an image. It scales very well with cores and with clock speed. The higher the score, the better. The Ryzen 9 4900HS and the Ryzen 7 400H were basically the same whilst the undervolted 9880H came in third. Without an undervolt, expect around about 3,600 points, which would make it the same as the 35W Ryzen 7 4800H. The old timer of the pack, the 1700X, trails in last. RAM speed does really help the CPU, so I think with faster RAM, it would pip the 4800HS for the fourth place spot. Many of you will be gamers and have probably run the 3D Mark times by benchmark. As you know, there is a CPU segment, and the higher the score, the better. Now, my undervolted 9880H does well here, as more often than not, it can hold 4 GHz on all 8 cores. But the Ryzen 9 4900HS is breathing down its neck, which is a splendid performance for a 35W chip. Again, the 1700X and the 4800HS are at the bottom of the pack. To test how the CPU handles a video encode, I used Adobe Premiere Pro and just used the CPU to do the work so there's no hardware acceleration. I measured the time taken, so lower the better. Unfortunately, I didn't test the 4800HS before I sold the G15, so that result is missing. The 4800H was out on its own on this one, over a minute faster than the 4900HS, and this time the 9880H was the slowest. Now the Blender benchmark is free and renders an image and measures the time taken. And this is the BMW test. And again, the 4800H comes out on top with the rest all tightly packed. The 4800H and the 400HS are basically the same chip. The former is a 45 watt and the latter is 35 watt. So it's interesting to see what difference those 10 watts makes. Corona 1.3 is the same type of thing, rendering an image using the CPU and measuring the time taken. This time, the 4800H came in last, with the 9880H winning and the 4900HS coming in second. It's great to see that these mobile CPUs beat out the 1700X desktop chip that has much better cooling. Passmark 10 has a separate CPU benchmark which tests various workloads and gives you a score at the end. The higher the score, the better. The Ryzen 9 4900HS and the 4800H were very close here and both were some good way ahead of the third placed 4800HS. The 1700X ran out of breath on this one and my 9880H came in a distant last. Finally, we have 7-Zip. This measures decompressions and compressions and is an excellent measure on how well the CPU handles zip files. It gives you a score in millions of instructions per second, so higher the better. The new AMD CPU kills it in this test. Smoking the Ryzen 7 1700X and the 9880H is left in the dust. Again, the 4900HS and the 4800H are basically the same. So averaging all eight benchmarks out and comparing it against the 4800H, we see that the lower powered 4900HS is, for, you know, for all intents and purposes, the same, which is a testament on how much power can be fitted into that 14 inch chassis of the ASUS G14. Beating up the desktop 1700X by, you know, a good 6.5%.
The undervolt at 98 ADH does fairly well, but remember, without an undervolt, this would probably be at the bottom of the heap, which is amazing when you consider that laptops with this CPU are usually north of $2,000, and you can buy the ASUS Tough A15 with 4800H, you know, for only $1,000. The 4800HS is an interesting one. It is used in the G15, which one would think should be able to handle a 4800H, but with the blocked fan air vents, it would struggle to cool that with the extra watts. It looks like my 1700X has been humbled, so I look forward to putting my 12-core Ryzen 9 3900X into my desktop instead. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe to watch my G14 coverage and also the Lenovo Legion laptops that will be available this month. Bye now.